Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome again. We have started the chapter of the gases. And in the last lecture, we have discussed the introduction of the states of matter and some basic properties of the gaseous state. Now from this lecture, we are going to start the gas laws. Gas laws are the laws that explain the uniform behavior of the gases. Which means that when the external conditions like the temperature or pressure is changed, then all the gases, this show same behavior, that is the uniform behavior of the gases. Means, by increasing pressure, the volume of the gases decreases. By all gases show the decrease in the volume with the increase in the pressure. So that is the uniform behavior of the gases. Gas laws relate volume of the gas with applied pressure, with applied temperature and with quantity of the gas. The law which develops relation between the volume and the pressure is called as Boyle's law presented by Robert Boyle. The law which develops relation between volume and temperature is called as Charles law. And the volume and number of moles are related through Avogadro's law. So first of all, we are going to discuss these three laws one by one. Let us start with the Boyle's law. Boyle's law was presented by Robert Boyle. In this law, every law has certain constants and variables. And the constants of the Boyle's law are quantity of the gas or number of moles and temperature. Mean during the experiment in which you are studying a gas according to the Boyle's law or you are relating the volume of the gas with the applied pressure, you are going to keep the number of moles and temperature constant. And there are certain variables of the Boyle's law that will be changed during the experimentation and they are the volume and applied pressure. According to Boyle's law, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the applied pressure. If the pressure is increased on the gas, then the volume of the gas decreases. Suppose if the pressure increases two times, then the volume decreases two times, means it becomes half of the original. If we increase the pressure three times, then the volume becomes one third. If we decrease the pressure three times, then the volume becomes three times of the original volume. Mean if the pressure is changed from P to 1 by 3P, then the volume changes from V to 3V and so on. When the sign of proportionality is changed to sign of equality, we use some constant and here the constant is shown with the sign K. If we rearrange this equation, then it will become PV is equal to K. So this one is the first mathematical form of the Boyle's law. Suppose that if a gas has initial pressure P1 and initial volume V1, then that product P1 over V P1 into V1 that will be equal to constant K. And now you change the pressure of the gas to P2 and volume of the gas to V2. Then the product of P2 and V2 that will also be equal to the constant K. When the right side of the two equations is same, then the left side is also same. So we can say that P1 V1 is equal to P2 into V2. This is the second mathematical form of the Boyle's law. And this is the mathematical form from which the short questions and the 
MCQs they are developed. For example, if the pressure of the gas P1 is 1 atm and volume V1 is 4 decimeter cube, suppose. So the product P1 V1 that is equal to 4 atm decimeter cube. Now we change the pressure and volume of the gas and the new pressure is 2 atm mean the pressure is doubled then what will be the volume of the gas so you can apply this formula p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 and v2 is required so v2 will be equal to p1 v1 divided by p2 what is the value of p1 that is 1 what is the value of v1 that is 4 and what is the value of p2 that is 2 so it becomes 2 v2 is 2 decimeter cube now if we place this value here that v2 is 2 decimeter cube then you can see that the product p2 v2 that is equal to 4 atm decimeter cube so in this law the boils in this state sorry the boils law was experimentally verified as well that the pressure was changed and the resultant change in the volume that was noted and then the product of the pressure and volume that was taken absolute Boyle's law is absolutely obeyed when you are dealing some ideal gas. But in case of real gases, there is slight variation in the results. So next we are going to start the graphical explanation of the Boyle's law, which is a very important part of the Boyle's law. <coughs> If a graph is drawn, you know graph is a diagram that shows relation between two variables. And here, the variables of the Boyle's law are the volume and pressure. So a gas is taken, experiment is performed, and the results of that those experiments are the series of experiments they are collected, and the graph is drawn. When we take pressure on x-axis and any unit suppose we are taking it in atmosphere and volume on the y-axis suppose this volume is taken in the decimeter cube or liters then a curve is obtained which is just like a bound and such shape which is just like a bound <coughs> is called as the hyperbola so the shape of the graph is hyperbola and the hyperbola shape shows inverse relation between the variables this graph was drawn at the temperature t1 that may be any value 0 10 degree c 20 degree c any value similarly another graph is drawn which is between 1 by V in per decimeter cube and pressure in ATM. When this graph was drawn a straight line was obtained and this straight line shows that the direct relation is present between pressure and the inverse of volume. In case of Boyle's law, we say that the pressure is inversely proportional to volume or we may also read it as the pressure is directly proportional to the inverse of volume or 1 by V. Then the third graph was plotted 
and in this case now we take pressure on x axis and the product of pressure and volume on y axis we know that no matter how much pressure is changed the volume changes itself in such a way that the product of pressure and volume remains constant so that's why a straight line parallel to the x axis or pressure axis is obtained this straight line shows the k and it was also drawn at the temperature t1 now the gas is studied at the constant temperature t1 and the three graphs are made these three graphs because they are made at the constant temperature they are also called as the isotherms these all these three graphs because they are made at the constant temperature so all the graphs of the boyle's law they are called as the isotherms but only in a single graph you get the curve while in the second graph you get a straight line and in the third graph do you also get a straight line but this straight line is parallel to the x axis now the same gas that was studied again but temperature this time that was changed when we are studying the boyle's law the condition is that during one experiment the temperature and quantity of the gas should remain constant but when we are performing the series of experiments then we can change the temperature up to some extent but during one experiment again i am telling you it will remain constant now the gas was again studied at some high temperature t2 and the graph was plotted again we observed that the shape of the graph that remains same the shape of the curve remains same that is still hyperbolic but when the temperature is increased here the t2 is greater than t1 then the position of this hyperbola is changed and in what respect the position is changed you can see that the hyperbola has moved away from pressure axis as well as from the volume axis similarly when at high temperature this graph was drawn again a straight line was obtained but this straight line that gets closer to the pressure axis and away from the x axis and when we increase the temperature in this case the again graph remained a straight line that means it is k but the lines move slightly upward and here the t2 is also greater than t1 now a question arises that why the position of the curves are straight lines that change when we change the temperature or when we increase the temperature the simple answer to that is that when you increase temperature in second experiment then the volume of the gas also increased mean this increased temperature caused the expansion of gas <coughs> sorry and because of this expansion of the gas now the position of the curves is changed suppose that if i take at the same pressure this value is p the specific pressure that i have taken you can see that the volume at temperature t1 that is v1 but at the same pressure the volume at t2 is the v2 so you have see you can see that the volume has increased here the v2 is greater than v1 similar is the case in all three here there is a very important information that if an mcq is asked that the value of k in the boyle's law changes with the value of k changes with alpha is 
प्रेशर बेटा इज वॉल्यूम चार्ली इज बोथ ऑफ दिस एंड सपोज डेल्टा इज नन ऑफ दिस देन वट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर सम स्टूडेंट्स दे गेट कन्फ्यूज डेट वी स्टडी पी वी इज इक्वल टू के सो इट मीन्स के डिपेंड्स ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ प्रेशर एंड वॉल्यूम सो वेन द प्रेशर एंड वॉल्यूम इज चेंज देन द के विल ऑल्सो बी चेंज बट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर डेट पी वन वी वन इज इक्वल टू पी टू वी टू इज इक्वल टू के मीन इफ यू चेंज द प्रेशर द वॉल्यूम चेंजेस अकॉर्डिंगली एंड द प्रोडक्ट रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट so the value of k that does not depend upon pressure neither volume correct answer will be delta none of this then what are the factors that affect the constant k of the boyle's law keep in mind that the constant k of the boyle's law depends upon the constants of this law and at the start i have discussed that the constants of the boyle's law are the number of moles and temperature so this graph that has changed the value of k has changed by increasing the temperature similarly if the number of moles of the gas they are increased then again the value of the k that changes and k is directly proportional to both k is directly proportional to temperature and k is directly proportional to number of moles even the position of all these graphs could be changed if we had kept the temperature constant and we had changed the number of moles as by changing the temperature the position of the curves or straight lines gets changed in the same way in the boyle's law if the temperature is not changed but the number of moles are changed again the position of these curves and straight line it gets changed the last thing is that this law this sorry graph is very important in a sense that this is used to check the ideality of gases this graph is used to check the ideality of the gases the real gases they do not show the straight line like this their value changes and there will be a topic in this chapter that will be with the title non ideal behavior of the gases and inshallah in that lecture i will discuss that how this graph explains the ideal behavior of the gases this was all about the about the boyle's law i hope so that it will be quite informative for you people now in the next lecture we will come up with the charles law till then allah hafiz